Hi, I'm Ray Young. I'm an emeritus professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm going to be continuing my, my series of lectures on the theories of smell. And today we'll be talking about the molecular shape theories of smell, and in my next lecture we'll be talking about the vibrational theories of smell. In my previous lectures I've talked about the chemistry of odorants, and in the last one we talked about perfumes and the physiology of smell. And in that, uh, in that discussion on physiology, we noted that in the olfactory region at the top of our nose, there's a mucous membrane. It's a lipophilic mucous membrane that restricts the, the uh, entrance or the detection of odorants. They have to have a specific structure, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the perfume industry has a prevailing uh, need for new odorants. Uh, it's a multi-million dollar business, and marketing requires... Uh, more stable yet biodegradable odorants. They also want new odorants for new and trendy per perfumes. There's also an environmental need uh, since many of the odorants are being banned due to allergic reactions from some people and this is particularly noted in Europe they're banning uh, the odorants. Um, so it's necessary to develop new molecules with the same smell of the banned uh, odorants. Also, of course, we want new formulations with these new perfumes, so you need new uh, chemicals for uh, new, new odorants. Now let's move on to odor perception, which, which is the focus of my presentation today. Um, you should note that we all smell essentially the same thing. Uh, people do not necessarily perceive different smells, and this is important to the development of perfumes. And uh, no two odorants smell exactly the same. But our perception is determined by the nature of the molecule. The molecule must be volatile, meaning it is, uh, has a low vapor pressure, easily uh, volatilized into the air. And this implies a low molecular weight, uh, less than 300. And it also must be lipophilic, as I mentioned. It has to get into this lipophilic mucous membrane. Uh, it can't be uh, hydrophilic. It also cannot be highly charged. Uh, it won't be able to move into that mucous membrane, as we uh, mentioned last time. Um, so there's a number of theories of smell based on molecular shape that have been developed over the years. It was first uh, proposed by Linus Pauling, the Nobel Prize winner, in 1947. And then Amore did an ex intensive study in 1948, which we'll talk about in a minute. And more recently, Kraft and others published a paper in 2000. Now the molecule shown in the center is a space-filling molecule, which more accurately defines how a molecule shape would look like to a, uh, a receptor. And to show, uh, I, in my earlier lecture, I used the ball and stick model shown in the center of this molecule, the two carbon, the double co bonded carbon in the center and the hydroxyl groups at the two ends, the red being the oxygen, the white, the hydrogen. And uh, this, that this molecule shows the electronic structure around the atoms, the, the van der Waals forces around each atom, and as they're bonded together, the electronic structure giving this shape. Now, the, the idea of the molecular shape theory is a lock and key shown at the bottom right. You can see the key would be the odorant, and the, uh, the lock would be the receptor molecule, receptor protein. And the idea is, is that, that they have to mesh. The molecule, the receptor has to fit uh, the structure of the molecule for it to be perceived in our sensory perception of odor. And this is analogous to enzyme technology shown on the left. Uh, you have an active site and an enzyme. The substrate sits in this active site to form a complex, and then the enzyme is able to act in this case, uh, hydro hydrolysis of a, a molecule. So this, this is the work of Amore, a British uh, a biochemist who uh, worked intensively on developing models for uh, odorant molecules, and he, he, he separated them into seven classes. Uh, I've shown three uh, of the models that he developed for camphorous, musky and floral odors, and you can see he's developed a, a shape and a size based on angstroms for each of the different classes. Uh, the, uh, the additional classes included minty, ethereal, pungent, and rancid. And uh, his, this was an early attempt at predicting uh, exactly what the size of the molecule would be to uh, give you the odor perception. Uh, we also know that the functional group can affect the odorants. We've talked about this earlier, and of course the functional group will change the shape of the molecule, so this stands uh, to reason for that it would affect it. 
Uh, alcohols we know uh, with a longer chain have a sweeter, stronger smell. We have the acid group, which can cause a different aroma in, in the lower molecular weight uh, acids are pungent and rotten. Uh, and then we have the ester group, where the carboxyl group uh, hydrogen of the acid is substituted with an aliphatic hydrocarbon, uh, a hydrocarbon chain, to produce the ester molecule. And of course we know these to have fruity uh, type odors of banana, pineapple, and apricot, and so on. So this is an important part of the developing these models, these functional groups. Okay, uh, there's been a lot of work done on sandalwood scent. The sandalwood oil we know is very expensive because you have to cut down the whole tree and destroy the tree, grind it up and steam distill it to get the sandalwood scent and these forests are disappearing so that we're, um, the cost of sandalwood has become almost uh, uh, eliminating the use of it. So uh, the main component of the sandalwood essential oil is santalol and that's shown on the upper left. And uh, this is the type of molecule that they've tried to reproduce. What I've shown is the, uh, the uh, one page of a laboratory notebook of the French chemist Jacques Vallant, uh, who worked in the 70s, and he was attempting to do variations on the santolol molecule to create a sandalwood scent so that they could produce it synthetically uh, as another analog. And what he did is he varied the ring structure on the left as well as the brand structure on the right. And this is, each molecule on this page represents one week's worth of work, so the page essentially represents a whole year. And after that year's worth of work at a cost of about $200,000, uh, they found just one molecule that smelled of sandalwood. Um, so this shows the difficulty in producing, uh, reproducing these scents. Uh, what is amazing from this is that the, the other scents produced by these other molecules with a very similar structure. For example, uh, there was a peach smell, a cedarwood, lemongrass, rosewood, canfor, and cut grass. Uh, it's, an, it's amazing when you think about it from this uh, array of molecules with a somewhat similar structure. Uh, Bangalore, shown on the lower left, also has been found, has been synthesized from some other chemicals and has a sandal sandalwood smell. So what they've tried to do is develop a set of rules, odor rules, so that they can predict what what type of molecule will give you this sandalwood scent. And this is specific of course to sandalwood. You need a different rule for other uh, scents such as rose as we'll mention in a minute. So the, 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 these are molecular structure properties for creation of a odor. And it involves molecular substituents, substituent patterns, functional groups, uh, intermolecular distances, molecular flexibility, and so on. And what, what, what resulted from this was these models shown on the right and the white and the, on the left of the white hand pay, of the white section of the slide. You'll note I've listed three researchers, uh, four researchers, and each one trying to improve on the predictability with these older rules. And you can see that they've used the functional groups and branching and so on as a predictor. Uh, however, after setting up all these rules, another set of uh, perfume chemists found uh, the compound acerol, which broke all the rules that they had developed and also had a sandalwood scent. So this demonstrates the difficulty in prediction of odor just based on molecular uh, structure. And here's some of the other rules. Bolines in 1973 developed the Rose Rule based on functional groups, branching, unsaturation, or the uh, presence of an aromatic group. Uh, then the, more recently, Kraft in 2007 published the Vetiver Rule based again on functional groups, branching, and the, the uh, bulkiness of the moieties in the, uh, in the molecule. Again, uh, showing the difficulty within this, but it's within, you cannot predict a cross sense, but only within the scent. And it has been helpful, but it's certainly not uh, totally predictive. So they've also tried to go to uh, using computer technology, uh, using uh, quantitative structural activity relationship models, quasar models, which had been developed uh, and have been useful in pharmacology. And these are predictive models derived from application of statistical tools correlating biological activity. 
Now, they utilize physiochemical constants such as volume, bulk, and polarizability, and they correlate chemical structure with the affinity towards a receptor. Now, what's important in this is that you need, that you need to know the structure of both the molecule and the receptor, receptor which is not, uh, not possible for olfaction since we don't know the, the details of the protein receptor uh, structure. So they've developed these olfactor form models based on these quasar uh, principles, but they're only used as design tools or conceptual models. Um, they're, they're only useful within one odorant, or as I mentioned, one specific class, and they're not utilized for prediction outside of that data set. So again, more uh, a difficulty within uh, the structural uh, molecular structure models for uh, odor perception. Another problem is that some odorants smell the same even though they're quite structurally different. Here we show musk. You can see there's aromatic structures, there's uh, a, a large molecule structures, and amazingly more recent in more recent years they discovered the, the nitro musks and you can see that a distinctly different structure but these all smell the same. And similarly for almond, we have benzaldehyde on the left at the lower left, and it smells of almond as well as uh, cyanide. So this is kind of crazy for prediction of, of the smell. So you can see the difficulties with uh, uh, predicting the, the, the uh, molecular uh, odor from different molecules. And similarly for muguet, lily of the valley, the three, uh, the top three, show a similar structure, and of course they smell like muguet, but then all, all of a sudden you have this molecule discovered with a, a five-ring sulfur compound, and it too smells like muguet. Again, demonstrating the difficulty with the molecular shape theory of smell. So next time, we'll talk about an alternate theory, the vibrational theory of smell, uh, in comparison with the molecular shape theory. Thank you.